summer holiday. How to rest well. How to rest well. Maybe just for a, for a little bit of giggles, I want you to think, if I were to ask you how not to rest well, you don't have to hypothesize about it, just think back. We all had a bad experience. We all had a long weekend where afterwards we come back and we go like, this was unhelpful. <laughs> in December, that you planned and you actually went to the place you wanted to go and you came back fatigued or just dull. Ne? Weekend. So how not to rest well. Don't you want to just smile and tell the person next to you one thing? Let's not do this again. What is the one thing? Okay. What is, just tell the person next to you. What does not help resting? What does not help resting? Okay, I see some of you are smiling and some of you are crying when you're sharing this, sinking back from some trauma. It's great. So Anel, you're going to help me. I'm just going to fly through some fly slides. Um, so whether you, next slide, whether you go to the beach, you know, or stay at home, or public pool, this is summer holiday in South Africa. For those of you who are not jumping on a plane to some cold European place, please don't. Um, we can dream about a white Christmas, but we actually like the sandy beaches, no? So, you know, there are, you, holiday is, is wherever. It's just the point is, it's disengagement from the routines of work. That is what a holiday is. Secondly, some of us really, you know, do you, do you rest well most with activity, doing some fun stuff? I have some people, I'm thinking of going on holiday with them and I become tired. Just because, like, rachtig, rachtig. You don't have to sleep in another place every day. Just get me to that place and stay, you know. Or do you actually like just being put in one place, not doing anything? Or do you like holidays with friends, you know, in some bush place, at a pool? Or are you one of those people who say, just, I had enough friends for the year. <laughs> Quietness and rest. Just me. Quiet space. All the moms, I see all the moms nodding their heads. <laughs> we have friends, they're in ministry. Not far from us now. Some of you know them. Every every year, he asks, uh, "What would you like for um, for our marriage, uh, for our anniversary, wedding anniversary?" And she says to him, "Would you mind if I go away alone for the weekend?" <laughs> and he's like, "So the first year he was offended because they have three daughters, but after that he goes like, she comes back better, so it's all right, you know." It's awkward, but uh, come back. We'll get married again next week. Or are you one of those people who? You know, you're not an extrovert or an introvert <laughs> with, with, without friends. You know, friends, but just there. I'll come to you when I want you, but there. I feel like that sometimes, you know. I feel a bit, I used to be indecisive. Now I just don't know, you know. It's like, the point is, why do we need to speak about rest? The next slide, you'll see rest. I love the scripture in Hebrews. Um, it encapsulates something of the truth. The context is hectic in terms of eternal rest with God. But there's about this sentence that, that gets me. And um, if you make this sentence your goal, this phrase, to strive to enter into rest. The point is, it's not that easy. We all had a bad experience. Simply disengaging from your work routine doesn't mean you come back refreshed. It doesn't mean you come back refreshed. It just means you're not working. But the point of rest is actually refreshing. And it's amazing if you think about it. Every single Old Testament prophet wrote on Sabbath. Every single. Every time God speaks covenantally to his people, he's saying, can I just get one thing? There is one activity that anchors my relationship with faith with you. It's the concept of a Sabbath. That's amazing. I mean, we call it a holy day. Next slide. We, we call it a holy day. We, you know where we get the holy day from? Because it's a holiday. It's, it's a holiday. It's because God is the one who said, stop it. Stop working. And God is the one who repeatedly throughout in giving the law 
and reiterating the law. I mean, he wrote laws on having holidays. The reason why we have three holidays a year generally, yeah, like three holiday periods a year, is because Israel had, was mandated to stop working three times a year, to take a break, to step away from work, step away from the vehicle. Los alles, kom, kom ons over kan sê. And it's amazing. So the reason why I talk about this every year is because <laughs> we must remember that God is the God who said, if you want to live in my kingdom, if you want to experience something of who I am and what life with me is, we have to work hard. God speaks about laziness. But more than speaking, addressing laziness, he addresses the concept of resting. Way more in the Bible is to disengage from work to stop your work and to rest. And he writes so much about the mindset and the practice of resting. I mean, all of us know that you, you can have a, a holiday at the, somewhere and just veg on Netflix. Let's look through the eight seasons of 24. <laughs> or let's look, look at Abby McBeal, season one to 38, you know, or Friends, season one to 24. And you come away there and you didn't do any work but you certainly don't come back refreshed. You, you certainly don't come back better. You don't come back renewed. You don't, the point of resting is restoration. Restoration, to, to be restored, to be rejuvenated, to be revived. So God, God is the one who said, let's enter into rest. And he's the one that says, listen, the point of a Sabbath, people, is not having holy rituals. The point of a Sabbath is because you need rest. We are creatures. We need rest. We need to be replenished. It's more, no? So, I'm going to speak about the concept of rest in terms of the acronym. I'm going to do the old Baptist teaching style. I'm not a Baptist, but we can learn a lot from them. So, let's go. R for rejoicing. So, resting, examining, stillness, and trust. So, let's go. Resting. I love this text because it's the first time in the Bible where we read about the concept, the Genesis of rest in Genesis. Thus the Lord, the heavens and the earth were finished and on the seventh day God finished all his work that he had done and he rested. So God blessed the seventh day, set it aside, consecrated it. It's not the same as the rest. First time in the Bible we read the hint of resting day, of a resting day. And I love this concept. It's if you think about it chronologically in terms of the narrator, uh, Moses writing down the events intentionally in a theological strain, narrative strain. He says, so Adam and Eve was made on the sixth day, somewhere. Created, I always joke about this, age 46, strong, fit, healthy, at the prime of your life, at the prime of your life. I mean, just when everything is going well. And then God said, here's your wife, or here's your work, and he goes like, yes, I love it. And he says, yes, your wife. And he says, wow. And then he says, okay, take a break. <laughs> it's like, why do I need to rest? Why, why, why do I need to rest? There is no sin. There's no sickness. There's nothing bad. Why do I need to rest? I mean, everything's perfect. And God says, no, take a break. Take a break. Rest in the knowledge that before you came on the scene, I was in control and everything's fine. Rest in the knowledge that all of creation depends on me, not on you. Rest in the knowledge that everything is fine on earth because I'm in control. So you can chill. I've got this. I've got this. You are not as important as you think you are. You can take a break. The world will not crash, Adam, if you don't take a break. The world will be fine because I'm God. You think that everything depends on you. So the first rest that you have is to relinquish the control that you have on your environment and say, God, you are sovereign, you're in control, so I'm going to test this. <laughs> I'm going to step away from the vehicle. And I'm trusting God that you're okay. I'm trusting that everything will be up fine. The point is you unburden yourself some the yoke of responsibility. Saying, God, you're in control and I'm not. 
I'm resting. This is, this is one of the big reasons why we struggle to have a holiday or a break, why we leave the phones on, while we check the emails the whole time, while we check in, is because we really struggle to know that God, everything will be okay if I don't work today. And sometimes we don't touch those things, but we have in our heads the whole time. There's a prophet Zechariah. God rebuked Israel through the prophet Zechariah. I can't have the reference in my head now. But at some point, God is angry and is saying, you coming to your Sabbath feasts, and you're thinking about your work and your expansion projects the whole time. And God says, this is so offensive. You're missing the point of Sabbath. The point of Sabbath is to let go of working so that you can rest. God says, I want you here for you to rest and to enjoy one another and to join me. That's it. Stop thinking about work when you come to church. Second one, you look and smile, but it is like a queenies. You're not in control, God is in control. Rest in God's sufficiency. So next one is to examine my insufficiency. Rest, E, examine. <clears throat> examine my insufficiency. God says, listen, Israel, I saved you from Egypt. Egypt is a place where you never stop working. Egypt is Babylon. Babylon is Egypt. Egypt is a place where you never stop working. Because you are a slave to work. You are defined by your productivity. You're defined by how much you, how much you produce, how much you perform. You're defined by how successful you are, by how many people you've got under you. You're defined by, by your ranks in this corporate world. And God is saying, I'm going to save you from that system. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't make slaves of other people. Don't be a slave. So how will we do that? He says one thing. I'm going to call you to this mountain of covenant. I'm saying from now on you take a break. This is the sign of Israel, of God's covenantal relationship with his people through the ages. You are not an Egyptian slave. You're a son. You're a holy priest. So what do we do? How do I distinguish? He says, well, it's easy. He just stopped working one day. Have you thought about it? Israel, I mean Jews all around the world, are a distinct nationality, distinct ethnic group. And it's not an ethnicity, it's a culture. How, how, did, how is it possible for the Jews to have survived outside of, outside of Israel since the Roman oppression until they formed a state again in 1948 for all these hundreds of years, thousands of years, how is it possible that they lived in all the other cultures around the world and maintained their distinct culture? It's the synagogue and the Sabbath. We have not become like the rest of the people in the world. Why? Because God said there's one thing that we do. We have a break. And it's amazing, all over the world where they went and where Christians, the gospel went, we have the culture of a day off, a holy day, once a week. It's because of this gift. The reason why we sit in church on Sunday now is because God said, when you enter the promised land, from now on until forever, this will be my sign that you take a break. And what is the point here? He's saying, I want you to remember that you are not a slave anymore because I saved you. It's identity. So rest. So I want you to come once a day away from everything else into my presence with my people and to rest, to relate with one another, to feast, to know that I am not just a worker. You know, for those of you who are extremely successful, eh? the pressure to maintain your success is nogal work, eh? competitive world out here. So the gift of coming home for a holiday, being in the presence of God and being in the presence of your family, the gift is, at home, I'm just husband, I'm just wife, I'm just brother, I'm just sister. You remember that you're significant not because of your performance, but I'm significant because of my relationship, stuff that I don't do. You know, oh, Mias, we just dedicated him. You're significant because you're, you're Willem and Mareka's child. You're awesome. 
You're a child of God. You're dedicated to Him. You belong to Him. Love you. You're amazing not because you're successful, not because of what you earn, not because of how hard you worked, not because of, not because of your failures. You come home, you had a disastrous year. Nothing worked out. Your contract didn't work out. You had to retrench a lot of people. Things didn't work out well for you. You thought you are going to do all those things. You sucked at everything. Nothing worked well. Yeah? You come home for Christmas and everyone goes like, oh, this lacquer me to sin. And you remember that I am significant in this world because of whose I am, not because of what I do. Relationship. You rest. You examine my heart, my relationships, what's really, really important. What is, what is really important in life? And you remember that one day when Jesus comes back and everything will be restored, how much you made, what position you held, how bad you failed, none of those things really matter. What does matter? I'm loved, I'm significant, I loved. It's like a, make room for God, make room for God. Examine your heart, examine your passions, examine your priorities. Holidays are time, and don't, 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 calc, don't, this is not a point, the point is not here to, to spreadsheets, no? The point is FaceTime. Remind yourself organically that this is who I am and what I am. Make room for God, make room to belong. Rejoice, God is in control. Examine what's really important. Thirdly, stillness, no? I love this thing. To stop working six days a week. Six days you shall work. Remember before we give the Sabbath, no? it says, Yemut <laughs> Verk. For most of you, don't have to say you have to work. For most of you, have to say, Some people in, in our culture, we have to say, <laughs> Like it. Six days you shall work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest. A holy gathering. This is a holy gathering. Every, when you sit around your Christmas table, when you run around on the beach with your children, when you play in the pool, or when you just wake up late in the morning and have breakfast together, this is a holy gathering. You can say to one another, this is a holy gathering. This is really holy. This is what God wants. You shall do no work. No? These are the feasts of the Lord's holy gathering. Stillness means to disengage from work and intentionally to relate to one another. To remind myself who I am and where is the story going. To remind myself that I'm not going to work now and build Babylon, build some company, build some, make someone rich somewhere, some investor far away. This is not about me working. This is about me knowing that I'm now a child of the king. And these are my people. This is my tribe. And one day, Jesus will come back and fix everything. We are reenacting in our feasts and our gatherings. We're reenacting what it will be like when Jesus returns. What it will be like. I mean, when you spread that Christmas table, eh? can you listen? Anyway, when you spread that Christmas table, and whether it's cold stuff or hot stuff or braai or fruit, it doesn't matter what you do. Whether it's just wortels and carrots because you're vegan, it's fine. But when you spread that table big, and you're going to sit, just for a moment, maybe say it to someone next to you, saying, you know what? When Jesus comes back, this is the picture he uses every single time to say what it will be like. We're going to sit, feast, laugh, and relate to one another. So our holidays are a reenacting of what it will be like when Jesus returns. We will work, but our work won't kill us. <laughs> because we will work in holy rhythms. We'll participate with him. But mostly, we will laugh and tell the stories of his goodness when we sit next to each other. Like, eh? And then the next one, Sabbath is everything about trust. Everything about trust, identity and trust. I always say it. Sabbath, when you take talk about a holiday, it's always an issue of trust. Six years, this is when it talks about this Sabbath year, when you take about a sabbatical. For six years, you shall sow your field, but in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. The Sabbath to the Lord, you shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard. This is the one thing that Israel struggled with all its life because this is hectic trust, eh? knowing that if I take a year off, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> if I take a year off, we're going to die, you know, this is 
the fear that we live with. And God says to Israel, listen, Israel, sow your field, plant your stuff. But once a year, your field needs to rest. Everything needs to rest. So take a break. Don't work. I will provide for you. I will. I will provide. There will be sufficient that comes up in the land for you and for your neighbors. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know, don't fear. Don't stress. Intentionally don't sow. Stuff will come up. I will make sure that stuff will come up. Remember, in, this, in, the, in the wilderness, man, our bread rained down. You wanted meat. I sent in a flock of birds, you know. It's fine. God says, I will provide for you. It's extremely difficult. And God is saying, yeah, listen. Sabbath is everything about trust. So when you go away in your holiday and you leave everything behind, perhaps you will stay at home this year because we live in Cape Town. I mean, people come all over the world to have holidays in Cape Town. Why should we go away? No? Anyway, but the point is you go away and you stop everything and you don't work. In this not working season, what you're doing is you are saying, God, I trust your kingdom. I trust your provision. I trust that you will give sufficient to me, not just now, but next year. And how do I know it? Well, I can look back over this year and say, wow, thus far the Lord has provided for me. We had a hectic year. Things didn't work out that well. Or maybe you had a bumper year and things really went well for you. But the point is at the end of the year, you look back and you go like, wow, God, I can trust you because see how faithful you are. And you look forward to next year and say, God, I'm doing nothing now to provide for me or for my family because I trust you. I'm not working now. I'm looking forward to next year and saying, God, I can trust you for next year. This is me taking a step of faith saying, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to check my phone the whole time, check my email the whole time. I'm not going to do all that stuff. I spoke about stillness earlier, and this is where the trust thing comes out. Really want to encourage you guys. Let go of what you always do. Engage the people around you. Let go of the screens most of the time. I'm fine if you watch a movie now and then with your family or with your kids. It's just, this is bad. The point is, don't live there. Don't live on the news. I can guarantee you, your, the news articles and channels will be filled with disasters and wars. It happens all the time. But somehow, because we disengage from our work, every single December there is some tsunami or some crisis or some new war or some new political disaster, you know. Let go of all those things and saying, God, you're the God in control of this universe. You've got control of this country. You're in control of me. And right now I'm going to say I'm going to disengage. So rest. Next slide. We're going to rejoice, examine, be still trust. I'm going to read the scripture to you. I prayed it in the opening. This morning, as I just did my own little reading for myself, I was so smiling, you know. Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I love the scripture's framework, né? Starting with rejoicing, just looking at thinking, God, you've been good. You're in control of everything. You've been so generous to me this year. I just rejoicing in the fact that you're God in control of everything, and I'm not. I feel so safe. Examine your gentleness. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. I think <laughs> this is the personal reading this morning. I'm like, when I read, let your gentleness be known to everyone, it's, it's the first thing that just goes examination. I'm like, God, okay. <laughs> Maybe not everyone. <laughs> a lot of people, but I'm, <laughs> my gentleness is not known to everyone. God, so I'm laughing now, but my point is, it's a time just to go like, God, how I've grown, where would I like you to grow? Where would I like you to, to shape me next year? Please, <laughs> let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Stillness, don't be anxious, don't fret, don't worry, don't be busy with everything, just let go. Let go of everyone, of everything, take a break. This is a holy day, take a break. Be with God, be with your people. Don't be anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, 
Let your request be known to God. Trust God. Bring your requests, bring your thank, but bring it with thanksgiving. Building trust. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. This is what I need from you, God. Building trust. Rest. Rejoice. Examine. Be still. And trust God. I want you to look at the slide for a moment. And um, just before we close in prayer, don't you want to, um, if you find someone relatively friendly next to you, if you don't, you can move. <laughs> Let your gentleness be known to everyone. But look at someone next to you and just say, listen, looking into the holiday, I think this is what stirs me about, about a break. Perhaps you're working in retail and this is not your holiday season. I just memorize this for later, you know, or pray this for the person next to you. But for the rest of you, take a moment and say, what do you think? What do you long for? And uh, then we'll close in praying.